Hey guys, how's it going? This is Kellen here with another review today. Looking at one from Finder Stefaner. Uh, this is for Hefe Spear, Hefe uh, It's coming in at 5.4 percent, and yeah, this is honestly holds a very special place in my heart. I've really loved this beer. Um, probably one of the first. When I started getting into craft beer, um, a beer store near me in Vermont had very good Euro distribution, and they had a large variety of uh, Vine and Chiffoner beers. And they're just very well done, very affordable. I think these are like two ninety nine for, you know, a 17-ounce, 16.9-ounce um, bottle. And they're just so good. Um, yeah. And I, I love the aesthetic. It's just the, I think they've kept it. I'm sure they've kept this label for decades. Um, it just has that. And I'm pretty sure I've seen old pictures of this beer from like the 80s and 70s in bottles, and it's exactly the same. And, of course, they got to keep the purity law um, note there. So yeah, it's essentially German breweries. They can't, um, they're limited, um, to very base ingredients in the brewing process. I think originally it was, yeah, definitely it was water, barley, and hops. Um, but later on when you, they turn, when they just determine you can actually add yeast, like a, uh, a, a, a cultured yeast to the beer, they put that into, they added that to the exception. Um, but yeah, I'm not exactly sure if they really hold to that anymore, uh, or if it's just more for tradition's sake, keeping in tradition. Um, if anyone knows, let me know. I really don't know. Uh, I've done my research on it, apparently. <laughs> um, and they claim to be the oldest brewery in the world. It's 1040, is what they say. So cool. Um, yeah, so I got some poured out. And yeah, it's the, kind of that classic um, Hefeweizen. Um, a little darker on camera, but it actually does look pretty nice. Um, nice glowing orange. Um, a little haze to it, which is also a good sign. Um, it's probably means this has been bought, obviously it's been bottle conditioned and you get some yeast sediment at the bottom, get that into the beer, it's going to get a little haze to it. Um, so yeah, it's exactly what you want to see in a, a, uh, they have a Bison, so. I had a nice head before. Um, I've been actually sitting on it for a bit. Yeah, kind of class. It had very creamy, very well, car very good carbonation. Just again, just the classic notes or elements you want in this style. It's an aroma. Yeah, so a lot of spice, a lot of banana, um, like kind of a spiced bread. Um, hard to describe. I don't really like almost like a cinnamon infused bread or a, like nuts. This is kind of like a concoction or a um, of like. Panoply of spices in some bread, but like kind of like mild, like mold spices. Um, you get again, you're getting some clove, some banana. You're getting that classic bubble gum um, ester, uh, which again, it's very reminiscent of Belgian yeasts and esters as well. Um, which I'm pretty sure I'm sure are using the same. There's a similar structure to that yeast, or it's pretty comparable. I'm, my my knowledge is a little limited on that. Why they're so similar? I'm I don't know. If, just for tradition's sake, they kind of had the same elements, um, or if that's, again, look more of a regional thing. So, I mean, again, if people know the distinction between the two, let me know. Again, they're very similar. So if you have like a fit beer uh, that's traditionally brewed, um, something like an Allagash White, something that's, you know, in the U.S. you can get, uh, can get very similar um, aromatics to it and flavors. Um, but yeah, you can eat all those things. So let's give it a taste. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, it's so clean. I'm getting all those flavors, but there's really no residual um, flavor that just sticks around. No, no weird sweetness. Um, no off kind of resin flavor, which you, sometimes I get in some American hefeweizens. They kind of come off as plasticky or just a little funky. Um, but obviously, you know, these guys have been around. I'm sure they've, they've kept the same yeast profile for hundreds of years. Um, or the yeast culture for hundreds and hundreds of years. So they have a very controlled product here and just can cons consistently push out um, the this, this same quality beer, which is just an awesome to me. It just shows you after hundreds and hundreds of years, you pretty much just perfect this product. And I'm sure they even, uh, if there's like maybe some new, like some like subtle shifts they've done in that time, but I doubt it. I'm sure they've kept it pretty similar um, since then, which is cool. So you're kind of like tasting a beer that's might have tasted like this for for a very long time, which I think is really interesting, especially when you're trying European style stuff. That's styles that have been around for so long. You're really getting kind of a uh, 
Um, it's kind of like an anachronistic kind of vibe to it. You know, you're, you're sitting here in the 21st century with all the uh, fruited hazy IPAs in, at your choosing, and then you get the one that's been here for, or the, the beer that's been the same for hundreds and hundreds of years, but it's still fucking fire, and people have been enjoying it for that long. Um, but yeah, this is the perfect, in my opinion, it's a perfect uh, Hefeweizen. Um, it does exactly what it should for the style. Um, and probably was responsible for forming that impression, the most characters would you associate with the style, um, especially given, you know, assuming it's as old as it claims to be. Uh, so it's just perfect, in my opinion. Um, especially in general, traditional styles, if any tr style is traditionally done and just done well, um, especially European breweries, if it's a Cantillon sour, um, and, or, if, or if it's just a more basic style, like a Weizen, some type of Weizen based beer, or wheat-based beer, um, then it, it, it's to my in my opinion, it's perfect. You know, you, you might not like. It might not be your preference. It might not be something you look for, or something you'd want to drink every single day or have regularly. Um, but in terms of what they're striving for, I don't think there's really anything they can improve on. So, perfect beer, in my opinion. If you haven't had any Vinschef Honor and you're into craft beer. Um, Please do yourself a favor and try some of the varieties. They just make excellent um, wheat-based beers. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to give it a number up since it's perfect for what it is. It's fine. Stefaner's Hefeweizen beer. Tell my son, guys. Cheers.